Hello Year 11, Mr Godman here and welcome to this homework video. We're looking here at the end of the Cold War and today we're going to see how relations improved between Reagan and Gorbachev in the late 80s. And that means we're going to focus on the summit meetings between 1985 and 1989. So it's time for your do now. We'll do things slightly differently today. You'll find this do now quiz inside your workbook. It's task 3.7 and it's multiple choice. I want you to do this without looking back at your notes on Gorbachev, so try and do it from memory. You're gonna pause the video now, and when you're done, hit play and we'll check the answers together. Okay, let's check those answers. So first of all, number one, perestroika is Gorbachev's policy of economic reform. Number two, glasnost, Gorbachev introduced it to end the culture of secrecy. Number three, Gorbachev hoped to improve living standards for the Soviet people. Number four, the correct answer is A, Gorbachev was actually younger than previous Soviet leaders. Number five, our three reformers were Gorbachev, Narj and Dubček. And lastly, number six, the correct answer is A, B and C both increased economic pressure on the Soviet Union. A, solidarity was a trade union in Poland, which was causing political problems for the communist government of Poland. Remember to tally up your score out of six. And let's move forward. So last lesson, we looked at Gorbachev's policies So this opened the way to a series of summit meetings between the two leaders. Both Reagan and Gorbachev met several times face to face through the later 1980s to try and work on the issues dividing them. The two leaders met in various cities, mostly in Europe, Geneva in Switzerland, Reykjavik in Iceland, Washington in the USA, Moscow in the USSR, and the final summit was held in Malta. Throughout these summits, for Reagan, the aim was to win the Cold War, and he intended to try and use his plans for an SDI system to put pressure on Gorbachev into making compromises. For Gorbachev, his aim was also clear. In these summits, he wanted to get Reagan to give up on the idea of an SDI system, and to agree to give up nuclear weapons. As we know, this was very important for Gorbachev because the USSR's economy was struggling and it could no longer afford the costs of the arms race. So Gorbachev hoped to persuade Reagan to cooperate in bringing the arms race to an end. So you're ready now to do some reading. In your workbooks, you have information 3.8, and it tells you about what happened at each of those summits. I want you to pause the video now and read about them, and I want you to give each summit a success rating. And I want you to do this in the form of a percentage. So for example, a very, very successful summit, you might score 95%. Um, a very unsuccessful summit might only get a 10% rating. When you're doing this, try and think about what makes a successful summit. Look for good relations between the leaders, promises of further talks, and of course, um, look out for whether or not the superpowers reached any formal agreements or signed any treaties. When you're done on that, you can hit play and move forward. 
In the final part of our lesson, we're going to think about this question. It's a narrative question. Write a narrative which analyzes the improvement in superpower relations in the period 1984 to 1989. So imagine if you had that question and you had to tell the story of how and why superpower relations improved. What would you include in your narrative? Which events would be important enough to put in it? In task 3.9, you have six suggested events that could go in your narrative. I want you to decide which ones are important enough to put in and to explain your decision. You might want to pause the video now and have a go at that task before we go through the answers. OK, let's compare some answers. Firstly, the Soviet Union was in crisis in the early 1980s. I think this is very important to include in the narrative. This is why Gorbachev had to reform the economy and end the arms race. And that is what drove him to negotiate with the West. You might want to change or add to the answer that you wrote. OK, our second option, Gorbachev's approach was different to earlier Soviet leaders. Yes, this is very important to include in the narrative because Gorbachev was seen in the West as more informal and more open to reform. And that meant that Western leaders like Reagan and Prime Minister Thatcher in Britain were willing to negotiate with him. OK, here's option three. Gorbachev and Reagan got on well. Yes, that's important to include in a narrative because as a consequence of this, they were able to have productive talks and keep a working relationship, even when summits went badly. So this is quite important. Here's option four. Reagan was not interested in disarmament. Actually, I think this is less important for our narrative on superpower relations, because actually it didn't stand in the way of relations improving. Gorbachev made further compromises, which led to agreement. Here's option five. The Reykjavik summit collapsed. This probably wasn't important enough to include in our narrative, because even though the summit collapsed, it didn't really stop superpower relations improving. Disarmament talks continued and they later succeeded. Our last one, number six, the Washington summit was a breakthrough. This is crucial to include in our narrative because the Washington summit led to the major treaty of this period. It was called the INF Treaty. Both superpowers agreed for the first time to make reductions to some of their nuclear weapons stocks. And this really mattered, and it mattered for three reasons. Firstly, it slowed the arms race down. Secondly, because the superpowers got rid of some of their nuclear missiles in Europe, that reduced the tensions in Europe. And thirdly, both superpowers were able to reach this agreement and that built trust between them. And in the long term, that went on to lead to the end of the Cold War. So this last one, the Washington summit and the INF treaty, that is particularly important to include in our narrative. When you finished um, making your notes, tweaking your answers, then you're complete. Well done, Year 11, and I'll look forward to seeing you next lesson.